Many people have discussed how Optimus, the Tesla bot, inherits a whole bunch from full self-driving, including me, of course. But what about the other way around? What about what full self-driving can learn from Optimus? I think during the shareholder day presentation, we got our first clue about how Optimus can teach full self-driving. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I wanna give a little credit where credit is due. I was discussing this topic with Dr. Scott Walter and he specifically talked about the parking lot thing that I'm gonna talk about in just a second. But as it turns out, he's at Kennedy Space Center giving a personal tour to Julian and Cecily who I met at the shareholder day. And so shout out to all three of you there and I wish I was at KSC doing the tour with you right now because Scott is an amazing tour guide. Anyway, if you're in that area, you should definitely contact Scott and see if he'll give a tour to you as well because he's very, very knowledgeable about this stuff. All right, so let's set the scene here just a little bit. Full self-driving obviously has been around for a while. It's something that the Tesla AI team has been working on for years and years, basically since their split from Mobileye back in 2015, if I'm remembering the, the year correctly. But anyway, they kind of built from the ground up their AI team. And now, of course, they have one of the most incredible teams on the planet doing AI work. So that's just amazing stuff. But basically, as many of you know, full self-driving is currently built on a vision only only system. There is discussion about high definition radar being part of hardware four, but with hardware three right now, we're just using eight cameras and that is it. So essentially what they had to do was they had to build a system where these cameras could stitch themselves together, take still frames, take the pixels, put those into video sequences, turn that into a 3D understanding of the universe, essentially a video game where you know what the objects are, where they are, all of that kind of stuff. Semantically segment this stuff out, do occupancy networks and on and on and on. There's a whole bunch of stuff that went into this. And what happened was when they started building Optimus, obviously they had to build the humanoid form factor and that was a really big deal. And Dennis Hong and people at the Romela lab at UCLA, I'm sure helped a lot with all of that stuff. But anyway, they had to build that stuff. They had to build actu actuators and all of that. But as far as the, the software was concerned, they had a huge head start because what they could do was they could dump the software from full self-driving into Optimus and use that as a starting point for the neural networks, for the neural network architecture, for the weighting, all of that kind of stuff that give them a big head start in terms of the software. And so it's quite obvious, and Tesla even said this during their AI Day presentations, that Optimus inherits all of this stuff from full self-driving. So where does the virtuous circle come in? In other words, what can Optimus contribute to full self-driving? Well, what I'm showing right now is a clip from the shareholder day presentation where we can see Optimus walking around the outside part of what I assume is their headquarters in Palo Alto or some other place. Scott Walter actually found the place, but he says he doesn't want to publicly, you know, dox them or anything like that. So I won't be too specific. I think I actually do know exactly where this is, but I won't say exactly where this is. But anyway, this is a place you can see Optimus and I'm just, you know, running this piece of the clip over and over again so you can watch it over and over. But essentially what it's done is it's walked through the space perhaps multiple times, perhaps multiple Optimi have walked through the space. I don't know the exact details, but one or more Optimi has walked through this space and has tracked all of these points and semantically segmented out the sidewalks and the grass and the objects and the buildings and that kind of stuff and has created a map of this. And essentially that's a memorization. It has figured out the space on its own. How does this differ from full self-driving? Well, full self-driving essentially has Google Maps as its brain. That's the thing that tells it the, the, you know, the grand scope of things. It says, here's the highway system, here are the intersections, and actually Tesla has added some things on top of it, hints like things like there's a stop sign here and stuff like that. But anyway, it has, that is more or less its memory. It's like here is a navigation map of the world. So kind of the same thing that you do as you drive around a new city that you've never been to before, you depend on the GPS and you do the individual driving, right? So if you're driving, you're like, I'm staying in my lane, not crashing into other people, I'm going the speed limit, whatever that kind of thing is. But you're looking at the Google Maps and saying like, oh, I need to make a right hand turn in a couple hundred meters or something. And so that's the kind of thing you're doing. And that's not really memorization. Now contrast this to how you drive around your neighborhood or your commute to work that you do multiple times a week. You know it like the back of your hand. You know what lane to be in when. You know where the little tricks and you know whatever. You can take a back road or you can like avoid a light someplace. Or as you drive through your neighborhood, there are places that you know that people like to come around a corner really fast or there's people out walking their dogs at this 
this time of day. There's lots of little pieces of information that you know about your area, your neighborhood, your commute to work, your commute to the grocery store, whatever that is. Those are things that have become internalized. In other words, you've memorized them. And what Optimus is doing walking around this campus is obviously memorizing the geography, the, the landscape, the objects in this space so that it is able to then navigate that much more efficiently and much more confidently when it comes back again. And so I'm sure now you can start to see how this cycle can work back again, because of course, if we can take that memorization step out of Optimus, which is missing currently in full self-driving, we can feed that back into full self-driving, and then we can have a sort of memorization aspect of full self-driving. That's something that's really missing every time you leave the neighborhood, right? I, I get out, I leave my driveway, and the car acts the same way. It's like, okay, I've never been here before. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to figure it out. It'll be fine. And it's gotten better and better and better. Obviously, the new versions of the software are really, really good, but it still drives like it doesn't know the area as well as I do. Now, the contrast of that is, of course, if I go to a city that I haven't been to or haven't been to much, the car actually drives better than I do because me as a new driver is like looking around going like, oh my gosh, I have no idea where I'm going, all of that kind of stuff. So I see the contrast in the places I don't know where I'm going. I really depend on full self-driving when I have it. It's great because it's much better than I am in an unfamiliar territory. But in my neck of the woods in Athens, where I know everything and I know all the lanes to be in and all of that kind of stuff, it's not as good as me because, of course, I have memorized that. So it's got a big deficit. So if we can feed what Optimus is doing back into full self-driving and it's able to memorize the area around you, suddenly the car is going to start driving like a local instead of somebody who's never been there before. But then we can add on to that, that full self-driving like Optimus, if it has that capability, it should be able to do that everywhere. Because of course, somebody has a Tesla pretty much everywhere in the United States and Canada at this point. And so therefore, it should be able to be a local in every locality, because essentially, it's got the information from somebody driving around this area over and over and over again. And it can take that information so that it can be a local driver like the best possible kind of driver in every single environment. And that's super cool. And then as we were discussing this, Scott actually added on, and don't forget about parking lots. This is exactly what Optimus is doing. It's moving very slowly through an environment that's fairly complicated. It's sidewalks and it's grass and it's trees and it's buildings. Very, very analogous to a parking lot where you drive very, very slowly through it. And it, you've got tree you know, planters in the middle of it and you've got buildings and all of that kind of stuff. So that same exact sort of memorization factor could come to play for parking lots and make the vehicle behave much more confidently and reasonably in parking lots than it currently does. It currently is like okay in parking lots, but it's not fantastic. But this ability to memorize parking lots and to really understand them and their, their geography and their layout and traffic flow patterns and all of that kind of stuff will allow it to behave much more confidently in parking lots, at least, you know, hypothetically. And of course, I think it's important to be explicit about this right now. Scott, me, everybody else out here, we're all just speculating. None of us has any actual idea of what Tesla is working on or how they're doing it exactly. So, right, you know, we don't have any inside information, so we will be wrong. It's just a question of how wrong we are. But I want to be very explicit about that so nobody thinks I have some like inside information. But that being said, it is really cool in my thoughts thinking at least, that we're finally seeing, we're going from full self-driving to feeding to Optimus and giving it a whole bunch of a leg up on things. But now we're seeing the first indication of where Optimus can go back and feed into full self-driving and make full self-driving even better. And if it actually can do this, and if we can take that memorization, we can have the cars behave as if they are local drivers, really good, knowledgeable drivers about the locale for every potential place. And then there's one more layer that you could put on this potentially. I think this would be farther in the future after they solve pretty much everything else and it's already working great. And that would be how do you drive? So how does John drive to work in the morning or something? So what it could do is it could actually watch me drive and it could shadow mode me to a certain extent and it could memorize that and it could be like, oh, he likes to be in this lane here, this lane here. He takes this little back road here to avoid this light. All of that kind of stuff could be added as kind of an icing on the cake there so that you as a driver are like, oh my gosh, this is exactly how I would do it if I was driving. It's already beginning to do that in some instances, and I think that's super cool, but it's not always doing that. So it would be pretty darn amazing to watch the car actually 
almost mimic me. And you saw that in the AI Day presentation, and Scott and I talked about that, and you should definitely check out that video if you haven't. But anyway, you could see the sensei wearing the Optimus backpack and the sensor suite on top of his head, manipulating objects, moving around and stuff, and the virtualized version of the robot was learning, and then the real one was learning from that. And if you could have the car, even optionally, if you could just say like optionally, yes, please learn this route from me or something, right? So you just push a button, say, learn this route from me from beginning to end and drive it like I do and you do it a few times and then it figures it all out. And this is something that full self-driving should be completely capable of because what you saw was in the video, you saw the sensei doing the task but with different objects and then later on you saw the actual Optimus picking up different objects. So it was doing the same task, but with different objects. So it was extrapolating out the situation so it didn't have to be exactly the same. And that's the, you know, that's the nature of traffic, right? It's never going to be exactly the same on any two given days, times of day, anything like that. But if you can have the vehicle understand the basics of how you like to drive and then extrapolate that out into any circumstances, that will be amazing. So what do you think about this speculation here? Do you think that this is something that the Tesla full self-driving team, the car team, might start to take account of from the Optimus team? It could also be the same people. We don't really know how the organization works. They could slide back and forth between the vehicles and the, ro the humanoid robot. They're both robots, but they could be sliding around back and forth and so they could just be cross-pollinating automatically but it would be really really interesting or hopefully will be really interesting to see when we see the first inklings of memorization starting to happen with the actual vehicle and you start to go like oh wait a second it's actually learning how to drive this very specific circumstance in the most efficient way possible so of course I'm very hopeful that we'll start to see this relatively soon what do you think about that what do you think about the timeline and is this one of the reasons why Elon Musk is so darn confident about the ability of full self-driving to reach above, well above average human driving capabilities by the end of 2023. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, and very, very shortly, my Twitter subscribers as well. In fact, I think I'm going to actually release this a couple of hours early on Twitter so people can actually look at it there. And if you are able to support me on any of these different paths. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you're not able to just keep watching the videos, that's all fine as well. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, some big news here. You can once again purchase a Tesla vehicle with my link, which is in the description, or a solar roof, or a power wall, or any of that kind of stuff. And you can get some points and some loot and the potential to win a Cybertruck and a whole bunch of other things. So definitely check that out. And of course, if you need to buy something on Amazon, please check out the links in the description as well. And I get a small amount for a finder's fee for that. So I appreciate that as well. In the meantime, everybody have a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.